All right, I think I have time for a bonus video today. I already tested out the RT Overdrive mode on my 4090, but I was wondering, can the 3000 series do it? So in this video, we're gonna look at the most powerful of the 3000 series cards, and we'll try out going below 4K, because I, I can already assume 4K is not really gonna do the job here. We're gonna try out the <laughs> RT Overdrive mode, and we are on a 40, uh, sorry, a 3090 Ti graphics card. It is the Founder Edition at its out-of-the-box stock settings. So I'm turning off DLSS. Now, the 3000 series can't use frame generation and uh, isn't as powerful as a 4090. So let's go ahead, kick on this benchmark. Let me make sure DLSS is actually off. It, uh, like the Cyberpunk likes to just not obey uh, graphic settings commands, but okay, we are gonna fire up 4K resolution, native, no DLSS, RT overdrive mode, and I have a feeling we are going to be absolutely chugging, even on a 3090 Ti. Yup, that appears to be the case. All right, so I just started up some frame rate counters. And so if you look at the top left-hand side of the screen, the number on the left is the current frame rate at that exact moment, the instantaneous frame rate, if you will. The one in the middle is the average frame rate. I started at the beginning of the benchmark run, and that will accumulate the averages as we go. And then we can see the 1% lows on the right. Judge video smoothness by the frame time graph, since I capture externally on a 60 FPS capture card, uh, you might see screen tearing or judder that isn't actually there. Although if you're seeing judder right now, that's just because we're running at 10 FPS. <laughs> the frame time graph at least looks very consistent. It is a very smooth and consistent 10 FPS. Anyway, <laughs> oh man. Yeah, 1% lows just dropped to four. The puddle looks nice though. Anyway, it uh, looks like VRAM. If you look up in the top left corner, if you look at the memory line in green, the one on the left is VRAM allocation. The one uh, after that is the VRAM actual reported usage by the game, which seems to be around 13 gigabytes. So it does look like it's pulling in about 13 gigabytes of actual VRAM usage, a little bit more actually at this point. Um, so pretty heavy on all of that. So it looks like, um, if I did try something like a 3080, something like that, it would, in addition to just struggling, also be uh, spilling over its maximum VRAM capacity. All right, so we're definitely going to be struggling at 4K. So I think the next thing we should do before just abandoning 4K entirely is kick on DLSS super resolution and let's just shoot straight for the performance mode. So the performance mode, and I am going to uh, actually reapply that because I want to make sure it actually applies there. I can see the text kind of fuzziness change slightly on my screen when it actually applies DLSS. Like I said, the Cyberpunk benchmark can be picky about actually applying things in the settings. Anyway, um, what was I saying? DLSS performance mode. So this is going to render the game at 1080p resolution internally and then use the game's DLSS algorithm uh, to, uh, to try to reconstruct a 4K-like image and that should increase performance dramatically, and it has. Um, we have, uh, what, tripled our performance uh, up to around 30 FPS. And the bar scene, I think, is a little more demanding than once we get out of here. The image quality still looks pretty good. Uh, I can tell it's not a native 4K, but it, um, it does look uh, good. Now, I wouldn't really want to play the game at 30 frames per second, but this at least means that on a 3090 Ti, if you're on a 4K screen and you want to try out this mode, you at least could get a playable experience for trying this out. And this is really being marketed as a tech demo, a tech preview. So it's um, showing off the technology. I think they are well aware that most people can't run it, and the game's um, the game's art direction wasn't really designed with this in mind. So while the lighting might be more realistic this way, there could be scenes that don't look as the artists intended. Uh, yeah, so 35.84 average there. Um, <laughs> so it looks like 4K is not going to be the way to go. All right, we're going to drop down to... Uh, 2560 by 1440. So we're going to go to 1440p and we are going to try out um, turning off DLSS 
So this is gonna be a native 1440p. And I'm curious if we're gonna get anywhere near a playable frame rate, let's find out. Because, um, well, uh, 4K DLSS performance was a 1080p internal re resolution, which should be easier to run in some ways. Then you're using the DLSS algorithm, which takes some performance overhead. So uh, we'll actually have to see what we get here at 1440p native. I think it will be worse. And yeah, it looks like it is worse. So it's looking like even a 3090 Ti. So the, the strongest of the 3000 series GPUs is not going to be giving you a playable experience, even at 1440p, if you're looking for native resolution. So yeah, it looks like um, path tracing, if that's what this is. They, they call it full ray tracing. Sometimes they call it path tracing. Sometimes they just call it RT overdrive. Either way, it is extremely demanding. Um, interesting look at the VRAM calculations here. So it's, it's looking like at 1440p native, it's about 10 gigabytes of VRAM. Um, now, given the demanding nature of this, <laughs> of this test, it, I don't think any GPU below 10 gigabytes of VRAM would really have a shot at running this anyway. So like, even if you tried this on a 3070 Ti, you're gonna have to be using DLSS pretty aggressively anyway, uh, given how much our 3090 Ti is struggling here. <laughs> Look at the power draw on this thing too, <laughs> 450 watts. Okay, uh, yeah, so 20, 23.59 uh, average on that, not great. So let's go ahead and kick on um, DLSS super resolution. <sighs> you know what, let's try it the quality setting because when I'm actually talking about good image quality at 1440p, um, the quality setting I think is pretty usable. Um, we certainly can go more aggressively, and I think we'll need to test that out anyway, but I'm just curious if by going down to the quality setting, if we're gonna get something fairly playable, at least. Um, I think we will get a massive performance boost, but I don't think we'll be anywhere near 60 FPS. I'd guess more like the mid 40s. Let's see where we're at. Uh, yeah, it looks like in this bar scene, we are in the mid 40s. I think some of the other scenes um, are a little bit easier. When you're actually playing the game, some areas are more demanding than this benchmark itself, but. Uh, I think this is fairly representative of at least typical gameplay, just not necessarily the most demanding areas of the game. Yeah, low 40s in the bar with DLSS quality. It's, um, you know, at least a playable experience. Not how I would want to play the game if I was just playing the game for the first time, but I think I would uh, certainly like to revisit the game and just look at the look at the pretty ray tracing. <laughs> if you're looking for more of a side-by-side -side image quality comparison, not only do I not really have time to do that right now, um, I'm trying to make this video real quick before my kids get home from school, <laughs> but the um, honestly, Digital Foundry has already done a very good side-by-side -side comparison of the old Ray Tracing Ultra versus Ray Tracing Overdrive versus Rasterized. Uh, so honestly, I don't think I could beat their video anyway. So I just point you in their direction if you're looking for that. Uh, I'm doing more of a performance comparison here. Yeah, we're looking at about 45 FPS average with DLSS quality. So I'm just curious if we go all the way down to performance mode, if we can get a 60 FPS like experience, <laughs> uh, even on the 3090 Ti. So 3090 Ti DLSS performance mode, 1440p RT overdrive. What are we gonna do? I think I think we're gonna be 60 FPS or more. Let, let, let's see, let's see. Okay, uh, yeah, it looks like we're in the mid 60s at the moment. So, hey, um, there you go. Now DLSS performance mode at 1440p does not look as good as native 1440p. Um, there's definitely more uh, blurriness, ghosting, a um, little bit of more shakiness in, in textures on the ground. When we get outside and you look at the palm tree branches and things like that, um, those kind of, what are they, transparent textures, things like that, it'll um, definitely not look as, as put together <laughs> and stable. But uh, this, it does look, you know, usable for admiring the uh, the ray tracing mode, if that's what you want to do. Yeah, the palm tree branches aren't reconstructing super well. 
um, with DLSS performance here. I mean, the baseline resolution here is is very, very low when you're using uh, DLSS at 1440p at performance mode. So honestly, it's pretty impressive image quality considering how low the baseline resolution really is at these settings. So that's interesting. Now, I think just for fun, we should look at, okay, so how well does a 3090 Ti run the, the normal ray tracing mode? So like, what if we actually just played the game at ray tracing ultra? So ray tracing ultra, and I'll turn off DLSS. I'm gonna click it again and again, just to be sure DLSS is off. So we're now at ray tracing ultra. This is the old maxed ray tracing preset, although you could go up to the psycho manually. Uh, so I I'm just curious what we do here. So we can kind of see the performance difference. How heavy of a hit is this? Uh, remember we were down in the 20s when we were trying RT Overdrive at the native resolution, um, <laughs> like we're doing here. So this is RT Ultra at native resolution 1440p. So you can see even the old RT Ultra mode wasn't performing super well even on a 3090 Ti. It's still incredibly demanding. So um, also this gives you a chance, although it's not a side-by-side, -side, to look at the old RT Ultra versus what you were just seeing with the RT Overdrive mode. Um, but yeah, it's certainly, this is performing more than double the frame rate we were getting uh, with RT Overdrive. Uh, at the native 1440p, so it's it's certainly a massive performance, uh, massive performance difference. If we enabled DLSS quality on the RT Ultra settings that we're seeing here, we would be well over 60 FPS um, on the 3090 Ti. So, um, yeah, I think RT Overdrive. I think it's cool that it's here because it's fun to play with on the GPUs that can play with it. Just to look at. Uh, if you're on a strong enough GPU, uh, like a you know a 4090 on a 1440p monitor, then maybe it's even playable. But everybody can at least play with it, and then it'll be fun to come back to and revisit on on newer GPUs as they come out, that kind of thing. So let's go ahead and um, let's compare. Uh, you know what? How would it do at 1080p? So so what does it do at 1080p? So 1920 by 1080. Let's go back to the RT Overdrive mode. So RT Overdrive at 1080p. I'm gonna go ahead and toggle off DLSS. I'm gonna toggle it on and then off again to be sure that it's off. Yeah, I see the fuzziness on the text change. So we are definitely native 1080p. RT uh, Path Tracing, technology preview enabled. Let's go ahead and run on through this, see what we get. So can the 3090 Ti handle path tracing in Cyberpunk 2077 at a native 1080p? I think we can, but not at a high frame rate, but I think it'll be playable. <laughs> Let's see. All right, looks like we are hanging out in the 30s, but you know, a lot of console games are 30 FPS, so maybe you can do a 30 FPS lock and play on a controller. Uh, far away from a 1080p TV, you know, <laughs> then it looks pretty good. So yeah, 3090 Ti is officially a 1080p 30fps uh, GPU when it comes to path tracing a AAA game like Cyberpunk. So uh, hopefully you guys have found this interesting to visit the uh, strongest of the 3000 series GPUs in path tracing RT overdrive mode in Cyberpunk 2077. Again, this is very clearly marketed as a technology preview, not necessarily a way that most people will play the game. I, for one, am fine with games pushing the boundaries, even if it's unplayable for most people, as long as, you know, the game is playable for most people on reasonable graphics settings. So, 38 and a half FPS on um, 1080p maxed out there. Uh, although technically we could even go into DLAA <laughs> for anti-aliasing, which would be then even more demanding. But I think that's all I have time for uh, this, uh, you guys. Are you interested in seeing other GPUs in this? I don't want to overdo it on the, um, on the RT overdrive testing. But at the same time, I think it's really fascinating. And I hear my kids getting home right now. So I'm gonna let you guys go. Have an excellent day.